Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at string methods. This is part two and we're looking at index of, last index of, substring, replace and length. So let's start with index of. Let's declare a variable string description equals and there is a software engineer and a semicolon to end the line. So first of all, what is index of? Well, index of will return the index of the first occurrence of a specified string that you pass to that method. So for example, let's create a printout statement and we're gonna do description dot index of, and you can see that as we type it, it gives us some options here. So we can use index of with an individual character, a string, we can use it with a character and a from index and string and a from index. So let's start with using it as a character. So for example, we want to see what the first occurrence is of the letter I. And you can see that there's multiple occurrences. So there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. If I type in I, and of course, because it's a character and not a string, we need to use single quotation marks, whereas the string is double quotation marks. So we'd hope that the index of the first occurrence of this letter would be 0, 1, 2. So the index of this is 2, and that is the first occurrence. So let's run the application. And you can see it's printed out 2. If I was to type in O, this would be the first occurrence, so it would be more than 2. And you can see it's 11, because O is at position 11. And you can see it's printed out with 11. O is here, and that is at index 11 in the string. What about if we were to use a value that isn't in the description? For example, X. So there is no X character in the string, Amir is a software engineer. So what would happen? If we run the application, we get back a minus one, and that's always the case. So if you try to do an index of where that particular character or string isn't in the, in the string that you're testing against, in this case description, then it will just simply return a minus one. Now let's put this back to i, and we have three cases of i within the string. So we have it here, here, and over here. So if I was to run the application at this point, we'd get two. But let's imagine that we want to return the first instance of i, but only from a specified point. So we don't want it to be from the very beginning, we don't want it to be from index zero, we want it to be from an index that we specify. And you can do that with the index of. So if I leave a comma, and if I hit Command P on my keyboard, it comes up with this one. So this is the character, i, and you can provide it with a from index. So if we want to avoid printing two out and we want to catch the next one, then we can simply say, well, this is two, three, four for the space, five. So if we were to use a from index of five and run the application, you can see that it prints out five because that is the first instance that it's found an I because now we're starting from here and we're only taking into account is a software engineer we're not taking into account the entire string Amir is a software engineer. And as we said at the start, we can also do this with strings. So we could simply do strings, so double quotation marks, ENG. So say we want to find this set of characters here. So we're going to find the index of where this starts. In other words, the index of character E. So let's run the application. And you can see it's printed out 19. I'm not going to count every single one, but from here, from A, if we were to count from 0, 1, 2, and so on, when we hit E, that would be index 19. And as before, you can also set a from index. Now let's move on to last index of. So last index of is kind of similar to index of. It will return an index of a specified string or a character, but it will return the last instance that it finds it. So let's replace ENG with the single character I. So as we said before, the first instance of I is at position two, which is here. Say we wanted to return the last instance of I within this string here, 
what we could do is change this to last index off. Run the application and it prints out 22. And 22 is the position here. Now let's replace this with, for example, M. And you can see in this string, there's only one M and it's at position one in the string. So let's run the application and it prints out one. Even though it's the last index of, it will just print out the last index that it finds for M, which is incidentally also the first index because there's only one. Now let's move on to substring. I'm going to remove what's inside the system out print line here. So what does substring do? Well, basically it will return a specific portion of a string that you set out. This is useful if we want to extract a piece of the string for some other purpose. So for example, we might want to return just the text software engineer, and we can do that with the substring method. So let's do description dot substring, and we need to provide it with a begin index. So the begin index will be the point at where the S is. So zero, one, two, three, four, as we said, we count spaces, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So if I was to do description dot substring 10, that would return to me software engineer. So let's run the application and you can see that it's printed out software engineer and it's taken 10 as the start index. So it's taken this portion. If we remember back, we also said that string is immutable. In other words, you can't change it. Whereas here, it kind of looks like it's being changed. You have Amir as a software engineer and then you're printing out software engineer. So this looks like the description is changing, but it's actually not. It's actually returning a brand new string. So the string class and specifically the substring method will take the string Amir as a software engineer. It will extract what it needs to from it, in this case, software engineer, and return a brand new string. So if I hold down the command key on my keyboard and hover over the substring, you can see that the method signature is public string substring with the index. And so you can see that the return type is a string. In other words, it's a brand new string. Now let's imagine that we want to specifically extract something from within the center of the string. So we don't want to necessarily have a start point and then go all the way to the end of the string. So in other words, maybe we, we just want the text software and not software engineer. So we can't quite do that with this because if we set it as 10, it will return the text software engineer. So if we want it to return just the word software, we can do that with the second parameter of the substring method. So, so now this is a different method on the string class and it's substring, but with an end index as well. So we can use the end index and we know that this index is 10. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So let's put 17 in here. And hopefully this should return us the word software. Let's run the application and you can see it's returned software, but it's returned it without the E on the end. And this is just the quirk of substring is that the end index is exclusive of that value. It does not include the value of that index. It includes everything before it. So if we wanted to print out the full word software, we'd simply just increment that by one. So we just change it to 18 and then run the application again, and it prints out software. So we've just captured this part of the string. The final method that we're going to look at in this video is the length method. So the length method will basically return the total number of characters within the string. So let's do description.length. And if I run the application, we get 27. So there's 27 total characters within this string. Another point to note here is that we can also chain these commands together. So we'll go through this more in, a, in later videos, but for now, what you could do is, for example, let's remove the dot length here and we'll do dot substring with our begin index being 10. So we're going to extract software engineer. And we remember from before that there were 27 characters in here. So if I was to do description dot substring, which is now the text software engineer dot length and then run that we now only return 17 because we're not returning the entire description's length we're only returning the result of this command and the result of that command is 
the text software engineer, which in total has a length of 17 characters. So that's everything for part two of string methods. In the next video, we'll look at concat, contains, format, and a few others as well. Thanks very much for listening. I really hope you found it useful. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.